one of the activities that a lot of people leave for the summer, for the month of August, to be more specific, is reading. It can be reading fiction, it can be reading detective stories, others might read romance or even magazines. The important thing is that in any case, in all those books, in all those readings and articles, we can find gothic elements, we can find the function of the psychological messages inside these books, uh, we can see how all these connect with our own processes and then they can help us transition through the mists of, of change. So in today's video, Gothic Union reading recommendations for August, I want to talk to you about three, three important pillars based on three important books or pillars based on um, self-recognition, critical thinking and self-expression. So the first thing you're going to learn through Jinshin of the Bolens, Goddess, Goddesses in Every Woman, which I have the Spanish version here, uh, but you can find the English one. Um, I'm going to tell you what we learned from this book, which is how important it is to understand our psychic structure so we can actually navigate and transition better through our life changes. In second instance, I'm going to talk to you in the critical thinking um, section. I'm going to talk to you about this book, which is called um, A Broken Mirror. It's in Catalan, this one, because I, I read it in the original version, Mira, Mira Trancat, by Mercer Rodureda, but she's translated into English, because this is a perfect example of, even though it's a psychological book, and an existentialist, it talks about existentialism and the, the, the effects of the Spanish Civil War towards the end. It actually tells us a lot about the Gothic elements and how these Gothic elements interact with the characters and the psyche and what we learn from that. And in the first instance, in the first section in self-expression, uh, self I'm going to talk to you about, about my um, collaboration in this book, Diario para Madres Escritoras. So it's like a diary for uh, mothers who write. This is in Spanish. It was published here in, in Spain uh, a couple of months ago. And uh, it's basically, um, it's non-fiction and is the stories of five of us, five women, who happen to be mothers and who happen to write, and our experiences and our connection with motherhood that is not always um, as positive or as lovely as society um, tells us. But mainly the self self expression book. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you about, what you're going to learn is the before, the during, and the after of writing something of these characteristics, not just so much of the book itself because you'll have to buy it for, for that. So if you are willing to go on a path to self-recognition, critical thinking and self-expression to navigate through the transitions of your life in a balanced way <laughs> through Gothic Union lens, this video is for you. Hello Gothic friend, welcome to Gothic Land and Malice and you are in this space, welcome to this space where I help you transition through the difficult times in your life, we help you navigate through these difficult moments uh, through a Gothic Jungian perspective, so it's a very unique perspective. In today's video, as I said in the introduction, I want to talk to you about three aspects that um, are going to help us or are going to help you with your self-improvement, which is uh, becoming self-aware self -aware of where you are at the moment, your critical thinking and your self-expression. We're going to start with, uh, we have three books today, three recommendations for this summer. We're going to start with uh, Jin Shino the Bolen, uh, Goddesses in Every Woman, um, because this is the Jungian aspect, this is the Jungian analysis, analysis in psychology. You have 
also the male version, so we have the um, goddess in every man. As I said, I've got both in Spanish because I started in Spanish because it was a recommendation by my friend Felix Gomez, psychologist, and I just wanted to buy it in. I didn't think quite into I think I did think about buying it in English because I like to read the originals uh, in, in the original language, but I think it was more to have a conversation with him in case we talked about certain pages, etc. Um, so for Jean, her message is very clear and it's very important and it's not so much about the binary man, uh, men, women, because in our days standards, this is a complicated topic and I'm aware of that. And union psychology and analysis can bring this problematic duality, men, women, because we're not just all men, women. There are other genders and there are other colors in the palette. And I think nowadays, union psychology is very respectful of that. But we're talking about male, female, psychic structure okay because it's quite complex already um and it's not just to it's not so much about gender it's about your psychic structure as and i repeat um also because our psychic structure can be positive it can be negative what jean shinoda do, does she talks about this structure making use of uh, seven archetypes seven female archetypes in this book and i think i have not read it yet um seven I think so, the same seven um, archetypes, male archetypes. But as I said, some of the characteristics uh, that all the archetypes have, all the archetypes have are positive but also negative. And in all these negative and positive, we can find also the anima and the animals in various combinations. So that's why I say that it could be, it could be for anybody. These reads can be for anybody because it's not so much about how you identify with your gender, and I repeat, is more how your psychic structure uh, influences your decisions and your actions, and with which side of the archetype even you identify with every moment. Anyway, I'm complicating the video more than I needed to, or that I wanted to. But in any case, Jin she knows that she talks about the importance that, and even importance, but also as a as a duty to ourselves in and to others. How important it is to know our psychic structure, uh, to understand and accept who we are and what happens to us at certain times in our lives, because at the same time that will help us understand better others. This produces as a consequence that we accept, we interiorize, we integrate and we accept who we are. And we can work on the elements that we don't like so much. Um, but by being aware, not so much about eliminating them, sometimes it's not possible, but accepting the, 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 the negative, what we consider the negative sides. And even then to the point to say, right, um, do, I, do I want to stay or do I want to go? And you can make that decision, but not before having done this previous analysis. And Jean, she does that very well. Um, in her book, she talks about seven um, female archetypes. They're not all of the archetypes are not only those, there are some more. And Carl Jung talked about 12 archetypes. And in fact, I'm going to try to do a list of Gothic archetypes at some point. But that's a lot of work and we'll, we'll get there. Um, in any case, um, um, in Goddesses of Every Woman, um, she takes this, the, this myth, these um, Greek myths, as I said before, to talk about um, our structure, our psychic structure, different times in our lives. And she does that through different classifications of different of these seven different uh, goddesses. So she classifies the goddesses in or archetypes in virgin goddesses, where we can find Artemis, Athena and Hestia. We find the vulnerable goddesses like Ira, Demeter and Persephone and the alchemical goddesses or goddess in this case which is Aphrodite. So personally I think that everybody should read these books as I said before because it doesn't just only help you understand your own psyche but, and your own structure but also that of others. And if you are interested in, in this, in knowing more about this, because it could be that you're not really familiarized with the Greek archetypes or the Greek myths, and I do have a course that is coming out soon, but you can click already on the link. And it's called Female Archetypes, 
and the Gothic mode as a self-awareness tool. And through that, I'll take you step by step into a more detailed um, information if you're new to this topic and to understand better what, what this is and how it can actually help you, as I said before. In the critical thinking, and mainly if you're new, because I didn't mention this before, but if you're new to the channel, this is what we do. I'm trying to shade, uh, shade light to to shine light, to shed light, sorry, <laughs> to shed light into all the dark corners of your life and all the dark corners and processes that you might be going through so you can actually um, be aware more of what goes on inside your unconscious mind. So in Mercea Rodorella, in Mercea Rodorella, Mira Trancara, Broken Mirror, um, what we find here is again is the literary side is the connection between psychology and gothic literature and all the gothic elements that we can find in this book it's fantastic because this is the book i talked about in fogo which was the conference that took place in leon on the 5th 6th 7th of july this year and it, it was an amazing an amazing conference and i actually talked my paper was about the Donna Daiwa, which is a female archetype or a female representation of the women in this book and, and what that says about our psyche, about the archetype of the Donna Daiwa, which is again a connection with the folklore of, of part of our folklore, maybe even forgotten because in, in Catalonia we do have our folklore like in every place, but sometimes it's not so obvious, we kind of have to search and we have to dig it out a little bit. and. It's very important the aspect of nature to talk about the eco gothic uh, in this book because nature is tamed when we find it inside the house and inside properties, but it's wild and it grows wild and it's, it has its own rules and it keeps reminding us how powerful it is. Uh, when, for example, um, people stop, stop looking after it, when they don't clean the space, when we try to constrain and then it grows all over the place. When in a civil war, for example, because it appears the Spanish civil war, it appears and what happens to this nature once uh, once men and women are more worried about survival than about um, going to parties or going to the theater. And um, so it is a very interesting book because when I read the first time, I already liked it, but I didn't know, I wasn't aware that it was a gothic book because it wasn't sold to me as a gothic book. It was existentialism, psychological existentialism, and a book of maturity for the writer. But I already liked what I read. I already liked how it made me feel, the metaphors, how rich it was in this dark and light vocabulary. Uh, not everything was perfect and beautiful. There was all these dark sides of, as well. It reminds of the cyclic, uh, you know, nature, that everything is born, but it also dies. And then maybe there's like hope in, in shape of ghost, the ghostly appearances. It's a fantastic book. And that tells us a lot about our psyche again, because one of the elements of water and the trees are so important in Jungian psychology. Uh, because like, like Jung said, the sea is the mother, or is the, the best symbol, or the symbol that represents best our unconscious mind. It's got this fluidity, but it also reminds us of um, our own origin as when we were in our mothers, in our mother's wombs. And it also connects with life, the first um, organisms that were born from water. So it's a very highly recommendable book. And again, if you want to work more on archetypes and how the uh, Jungian psychology and archetypal psychology connects with Gothic literature to help you um, move on with your traumas and, and transitioning in life, uh, you can click on the link that I'm going to leave here. And the last but not least in the section of self-expression, I'm going to talk to you about very briefly about the Ayo Paramadas Escritoras. And I'm going to tell you what you can learn from my experience, which is the before, the during and the after. In the before, um, it was all cathartic because writing has this therapeutical um, effect. And before I wrote this, I, I, you know, I had a lot of notes all over the place, mainly because between have two sons I put between them I had an ectopic pregnancy that almost killed me and then I had later on uh, a twin involutive 
um, pregnancy where one bag was empty, empty and the other bag uh, had a, a small embryo with no, mo no heartbeat. That was really hard and nowadays still um, pregnancies that don't go too far in time are not treated like they are otherized, they are ignored, they are treated like less uh, painful than other types of uh, loss. And I'm not saying that it's the same, but the person feeling this loss can feel it at different levels and it's all about how you interpret your feelings. Um, so um, there's this before, which is all this process of where you don't really show your writing to anybody, but you just write because, as I said, is the only way sometimes of expressing and bringing out all the pain that you are feeling that nobody else understands. And, and it's your connection, it's your experience with that being that never became to be. Then there's it during the writing where, is where you become aware that there is an audience and you become aware that you need to structure your ideas. So that's the logical side of the exercise where you can create sections and you delete areas or you delete phrases that do not really go well. And then you're doing a different exercise mentally. So mentally, psychologically, it's a very good task because you are, as I said, deciding a lot of things and you are making sure that the person who's going to read it can make sense of of that what you're saying and the end of it the, the the end result when you actually have your book with you you have your book in your hands that you can also acquire in my shop i'm going to sell it to you if you want to practice your spanish it's not a complicated book uh, very plain spanish um easy to read easy to follow also because it connects very well with the audience it connects very well with um, each of us at a very internal, personal level. You don't even have to be a woman to read this or to have had a baby. You, it's, it's a personal contact and maybe you can connect with your own mom or, or with moms around you or with your own maternity, even if you're not a mom, as I said, um, because it's about human feelings. And the after having the book with you is like okay is there reality is it's become true is all that feeling all those feelings all those sensations now are real now they are in a book and it can help others which is the part that we tend to forget that our own experiences our own writings can actually help other people who might be silent who might be overcoming their own pain their own way and they don't want to talk to other people or they can't and something like this can help them quietly and in silence so this is it for today uh, i'm going to do a little bit of wrapping up um the intention today was to recommend you three books for this august reading i think three are not a lot of books and we have different sections so on the one hand we have our section of self-awareness where with jean shino the volume where we have goddesses of every woman a book that can help you understand your psychic or your psyche better your structure mental structure um without judging because you will see that you have positive and negative sides based on the archetypes seven archetypes then you have the critical thinking through gothic literature or a book with gothic elements in this case a broken mirror Mir mirai Tancat by Mercedes Rodriguez, catalan writer the importance of folklore the water myths um uh, and, and nowadays we have a lot of mermaids and myths and we keep going back to those we like it there's a connection between the eco-gothic the female myths the origin of life nature that is very powerful in this book and then finally the final book is my own my first collaborative book with other four writers Diario Panamá de Escritoras where I tell you about my own experience before during and after writing a very personal story about my experience with motherhood so I hope you have found this video useful. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I hope I have not left anything behind. And if uh, all the elements, all the books and all the courses and everything that you need to know about are gonna be at the bottom of the screen. And anyway, all the links are there. So as always, I hope that you have found this useful, that you have found enlightening and now you want to read more about yourself through different types of books and different exercises that you can do and i'll see you in the next video i hope you have a nice day a nice week and i'll see you the next time until then be very coffee my friend bye bye